1997 GMC Safari. When it's cold outside, it'll crank, but it won't start. Let's go figure it out. It's like going to the dentist. I like working on things. I like figuring things out, but this one only occurs when it's cold outside, and it's cold outside. And of course, I can't take it in the shop because it won't start. So here's the symptom. Key in the ignition, turn it on, cranks, no start. So the enemy. I don't want to run the battery down. This is a known condition with this uh, vehicle. When I bought it, it had this condition. That's why I got it so cheap. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'll put you in the stand and or on the back seat or something. And um, you got to open all this up. This isn't a pop the hood and, and figure it out type situation. So first step, I'm going to... Uh, I got to get to the engine. So I got to pull all this stuff out. And uh, once I get it all opened up, we're going to check for two things. There's two things that stop an engine from uh, from not running. Fire and fuel. If you don't have fire, you don't have fuel, it, it doesn't run. So there's two basic checks I'm going to run. The first one is I'm going to put a spark indicator on one of the spark plugs. Turn the key, if, see if we have spark. Uh, if there's no spark... You know what? I'm going to check the fuel pressure anyway. Fortunately, on this vehicle, it has a, a little fitting on there. You put a gauge on, you crank it. You got your pressure. That'll tell you your fuel is good. And, uh, and that'll tell us where to go. I've downloaded the uh, handy-dandy wiring diagrams. And if it was 70 degrees outside, I'd be in heaven. But it's not. Uh, I think that high today is 21 degrees. So... With all that said, I got to get to work. Okay, well, you didn't miss much there. The uh, Turns out that when I was slamming a door or something, the camera fell over. And uh, so you didn't miss much. The only thing you missed was me taking the cover off, setting it outside. We did get a little bit of reprieve, though, so the sun came out. So uh, that's a good thing because it's, it's, it's cold. So we've got this all opened up. Uh, everything's exposed. Let's crank on it one more time just to make sure that the... The condition hasn't changed, and then we'll get on to uh, fuel it. And it started. Yeah. Well, that's uh, the good news. Hey, it started. The bad news is it's going to be colder, even colder tomorrow. So, uh, looks like I'll be out here tomorrow testing this thing again. Okay, till then. Okay, well, it is the next day, and uh, it's cold. Uh, it's about 30, so it's 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 warmer than I thought it would be. So uh, I came out here this morning, uh, cranked on it, and it didn't start. I put my fuel pressure gauge on it, and it immediately started leaking everywhere. So I ran down to Napa, not a sponsor, and... Uh, uh, rented their P-51 
piece of equipment, their fuel pressure gauge. And of course, it's broke too, but I figured out how to do a workaround on it. So I'm gonna hook it up, I'm gonna crank it, we're gonna test the fuel system. If, uh, if it's the fuel pump, I ain't working on it today. So uh, if we've got fuel pressure, then we'll go on to the next step. So hold on, let me get you set up and we'll run a fuel pressure test. Okay, on this particular safari van, there's actually, this is your fuel rail right here, and it's got this fitting here. It's got a Schrader fitting on it. So, I don't know if I can do this one-handed and get that on there. All right. Crank it down, and we'll set the fuel gauge, the pressure gauge right there. And I'll crank it with my other hand. Let's we'll see how much fuel we got. Okay, so there you go. Um, it is not fuel. So fuel is fine. Uh, no leaks, everything's in good shape. So uh, on to the next phase, which is the electrical system. And uh, But first I'm gonna run this back to Napa so I don't get busy and forget. Okay, so we got plenty of fuel, fuel is not a problem. You need a minimum 50 pounds, 55 and above is great for this particular vehicle. We had 60, it should be running. So it's a no spark condition. Um, gotta get my spark tester down in there, which is it's not easy. You got to climb under the vehicle to hook it up, and I'm going to assume it's no spark. <laughs> so uh, there's only a couple things there, and I think um, I think I'm just gonna this this van's got 250,000 miles on it. Uh, I'm going to just replace the coil um, and the crank uh, shaft positioning sensor. I'm going to replace those two items, and um, I bet it fires up. Okay, it'll be a few days to get parts in. I'll see you then. Well, there it is. Crankshaft positioning sensor. Do I know this is the problem? No. Does it have 250,000 miles on it and is 23 years old and costs less than $20? Yes. So I'm gonna replace it no matter what. Well, it's been a couple of days and we got the part in. This is the crankshaft position sensor, and it goes underneath um, the front of the engine, right there behind the harmonic balancer. And um, like I said before, I don't know if this is the right part, but uh, we're gonna swap it out. And unfortunately, it is, the wind is howling out there today, so there's no way that I could uh, film it putting this in. So what I'm gonna do, I'll try to get a couple still shots and We'll see how those come out. And then tomorrow morning when it's super cold, we'll see if she starts. Well, got some good news, got some bad news. Good news is, well, let's start with the bad news. The bad news is um, I put the crank shaft position sensor in and um, started right up. It was great. Bad news is next morning when it was cold, it didn't start. So we're back to square one. Uh, did we make progress? Yes, we know now it's not the crankshaft position sensor. I've got the, uh, the coil, the ignition coil on or order. That in the hierarchy of things, that's probably the next most common thing that goes out. So it's on its way. Um, and if that doesn't fix it, we're down to the distributor itself. Now, when I bought this van, it, it wasn't running good. So I replaced the cap, the rotor, the plugs and the wires. So that's all taken care of, but this was a known problem. So uh, we're making progress. Slowly, but we're making progress. Okay, well, there is the coil. Um, not too bad to get to, um, but where I need to be and where you need to be to see anything, it's pretty much the same spot. So won't be much footage on uh, on its removal. So let me get in there and get it out. And hopefully the other one will be here today. 
and we'll drop it right back in. Okay, the new ignition coil's in. Uh, you gotta do some work though before you install it. This here's the old one over here, and it's got the ignition control mo module uh, on the same bracket. It's a two-piece bracket, and you've gotta uh, cut the rivets off and pop it off, and then move the brackets and the ignition control module over here to the new one. Um, the uh, $11 version, uh, this one, uh, didn't come with hardware, so no big deal. I've got some 832 stainless in here, uh, and I'll just put it together with that. We'll get it popped on and uh, wait for a cold day. Hopefully, uh, hopefully this, uh, this one will solve it. Okay, just a quick recap here, just to let you know where we are. Uh, I bought this van a while ago. Its function in life is to tow uh, my boat to the lake. And that's about it. It's a 96, 97, something like that. It has 250,000 miles on it. Yeah. Um, has one weird issue, and that weird issue is crank no start condition, meaning you turn the key and it just cranks and it doesn't start. Uh, when it's cold, but only when it's cold. So I can only work on it when it's cold. And what I mean by cold is below 30 degrees. Once it gets above 35, 40 degrees, starts right up and runs. So uh, when I first bought it, it just, it ran horribly. So I replaced the spark plugs, the cap, the wires are in really good shape, so I left those. And um, I replaced the fuel injection spider inside the intake manifold. And then the idle air uh, control seat had to clean it up once I did all that it, it runs great it absolutely runs great so saved it from the scrapyard now I just want to make it better I don't want to make it perfect because it's just not worth it but um, I want to make it better so this is the last thing uh, is this cold uh, uh, no start condition um, I just replaced to, to address this issue I just replaced the uh, crankshaft positioning sensor. That didn't fix it. And the um, ignition coil. That's the last thing I just fixed. I just replaced. Um, I don't have a scope where I could plug in and see uh, signals from the crankshaft positioning sensor. And I think it was $11, so I replaced it. The coil, I think I got for $18. I don't remember. So I replaced it. The, the last thing is the cam shaft, shaft positioning sensor, uh, which is part of the distributor. So you have to replace the whole distributor. That's 50 bucks. I don't know. I don't know if I'll replace that or not. I mean, we're taking this thing down south where uh, if it's 30 degrees, we're not going out on the lake. It, it'll just be too cold. So without putting it off anymore, let's see if it'll actually start. So, it looks like we got this one solved. Is it perfect? Nope. Did we make progress? Yes, we did. 